Hey everyone. Oh, we're back. We're back. Happy Monday. Welcome to the Trigger Warning 2A podcast. Yes, I am Antonia Okafor. And I'm Nina Prevo. Thanks so much, everyone, for being here tonight. Absolutely. And before we start, um, I want to give a shout out to my uh, carry girl people here with my pro gun, pro life, pro God, pro girl shirt. Ooh. So, carry girl, <laughs> thank you. Carrygirl.com, I believe. Thank you so much. Um, you guys are awesome, and uh, thanks for the shirt. Yeah, <laughs> I like the colors on there. It looks good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we're going to have Maj Touré on uh, pretty soon here. We're really excited to have him as our special guest today. Um, but as always, we like to just kind of chat with our audience first for a few minutes. Um, I don't know. I was going to mention that I am getting married on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, I was say, <laughs> And yeah, woo, in case you didn't see our Instagram story where we were kind of be a little ridiculous, oh. uh, we <laughs> yeah. had our bachelor party or her bachelor party. Yeah, <laughs> so it was fun. It was a pretty, it was a pretty crazy uh, situation. <laughs> um, don't take shots of fireball, guys. It's just not a good choice. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter what time of the night it is. It really fireball is, not. is just always a bad choice. <laughs> it's really, it's yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm so next time you guys see me, I will be married. So yes. that'll be fun. I'm excited about. I'm excited about. Are you that, gonna so. change your name? Yeah, okay. I am. I'm gonna make. Um, I'm gonna make my last name. I'm gonna make Prevo my middle name, and then take. Okay. Uh, my fiance's last name, but I'll probably still do public appearances with my with, with Nina Prevo. Prevo. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, like we've said before, like we have to keep our our privacy on the yes on lock because we talk about some pretty sensitive issues. Absolutely, um, and yes, our culture is a little crazy these days. S- Speaking of sensitive issues, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the biggest, you know, topic or story on the news cycle this last week was the whole Amber, at least in my head, it was the biggest news story. Mm -hmm. And other than the impeachment, yes. Okay. Um, Other than that, (laughs) is the whole Amber (laughs) Geiger trial. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I kind of want to save as much as I can with Maj and get his thoughts. But I want to hear your thoughts first, Nina, especially since the the legal side of things, too. What you thought about the verdict and the sentence. Well, um, you know, I actually I have more thoughts about sort of the response that happened after the fact. Or or rather, not the response to... um, like not the media response, but the the forgiveness. Okay. Um. That c- what that was his uh, uh, the victim's brother, right? Right. That was yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And I trust me, I've sat through a lot of sentencing hearings, and I have seen a lot of people, um, you know, have their peace with the person who took the life of their loved one, and it is extremely rare 
to see someone offer that kind of forgiveness and to offer that kind of love and like understanding to another human being because um usually people want someone put away forever because they they want the vengeance that they you know it's like Mm -hmm. i you like this isn't you should have been sentenced worse you know like you should have gotten even more than this because you took away my baby girl or because you took away my my brother or, you know whatever and so i was just so i i didn't even know the story i actually saw the um i saw him testifying or doing his statement before mm-hmm. i heard what had happened oh okay and so i was like oh like what like i wonder what happened and then i found out and was like oh my gosh yeah like <laughs> yeah. you know um the idea that because she, she she claims th- or she had thought that she was she was like in the wrong apartment and ended up um kill, killing his brother or killing his brother right, right. Yeah. allegedly yeah. allegedly right. allegedly that she thought um yeah she allegedly thought she was in the wrong apartment but i just think that that was uh, it was really touching to me to see that i don't know if you wanted to comment on that or obviously i could talk more about um some of the legal aspect of it but that was what i actually found to be the most striking about the, the, about the whole situation as- aspect mm-hmm. yeah well yeah and i think and people were talking about it. I don't think it really became national news because I knew about it because it's in Dallas. So when oh, it first well, happened last go. year, mm-hmm. I was it was a big Dallas thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think a little bit more people knew about it because the verdict was he, she was, you know, guilty, which for cops, yeah. usually that never happens uh, to um, that. Then she got 10. uh Oh, okay. And then she got 10 uh, years for, you know, the murder. Well, and yeah. that's the thing is that it could have been manslaughter, right? If they really believe in an accident, but they put murder. So I don't, the jury is saying by that, that they don't believe it was essentially an a- accident. Unless, yeah. you, I mean, you can clarify a bit more. I think there are some people who are kind of, cons- you know, there's different types of levels and they yeah and a lot of misinformation out there and i'm not i have to say i'm not familiar with um the dallas or the texas criminal law because every criminal law is actually something that usually is governed by the state still for the most part um we do have a lot of federal crimes on the books which is kind of um another discussion but uh, so i'm not 100 percent sure how they do it but oftentimes kind of the general scheme is that um murder there's two degrees of murder um but both of them in some fashion require either for, for it to be murder one it has to be um, premeditated right. so um, you have to have planned to do it and then gone out and actually killed somebody um, murder two usually it's um, it's like it, it could be like one of the examples of a murder two would be let's say you're committing um, an armed robbery mm-hmm. and then you shoot someone in the course of doing that that's what's called a felony murder and that often would be classified as a murder two um, and similarly um, if you like if you're doing it in the heat of passion that's kind of like a a legal term of art but like if you walk in and you like find your wife having an affair and then you kill the man or you kill her that would probably and i think mm, uh, again every state's different but i think that that would be murder too i think that's that was the thing is that they don't have first degree oh okay so they don't have distinguishing between those Mm -hmm. okay um and then manslaughter is more so um like let's say you were let's say you were fighting someone off in self-defense but you were really reckless with your firearm and you shot the wrong person and killed them that would be like a manslaughter because first of all you shouldn't be out just shooting your firearm if you don't have proper training and things like that so you're yeah. a little bit reckless um so or if you if you were like drunk driving and you hit someone that would also okay. be recklessness where it would be like a manslaughter um and then you get into petty pettier that sounds awful but you know there's lower classifications of um homicides that are more so just it it really was just a complete freak accident but you still took a life you know okay um but that's a little bit different than oh i was just like wildly firing my gun and i like hit someone so um you know they they do the the intent is really the distinguishing factor but the thing is the amount of cruelty and the uh, extenuating circumstances are often what goes into the sentencing so it'll usually be like a sentencing spectrum like you have a range of years that um and you know we can actually ask maj what he thinks about minimum um like mandatory minimums and things like that i mean Mm -hmm. obviously for for homicides it gets a little bit more like we kind of understand why there might be some mandatory sentences if you commit like a first degree murder um well the range was from five to 28 years it's a very <laughs> it's odd pretty range. broad yeah, yeah. so yeah. and so a lot of people you know f- 
for a long time they didn't even have those ranges and we had problems in the south where like judges would be completely mm. racist and like arbitrary and like you know a, a black guy might get life in prison and a white person might walk for right. the same crime so they tried to still put him in these ranges but even within those ranges there's just such wild um differences in the sentencing and it, I, I, did, they, did they take a plea or that was a jury verdict right that yeah was that a was jury. a jury and there and was actually the judge been jury the yeah and yeah. then yeah so afterwards they well no so the jury verdict but also sentencing they gave her 10 years oh okay so that's that's a little bit different than okay. in Colorado okay. because our judges the what the jury does is they determine they determine if you're guilty or not and then if you if you're found guilty of something where there's a capital like where you mm. could get the death penalty then the jury comes in and decides if that's okay or not okay but other than that the judge does the sentencing here so that's kind of interesting so the jury was the one that within that spectrum gave her 10 years yeah and it was interesting because they had a couple of them they were speaking out um and a couple of them were saying that basically, like, well, we were going to think about, that's kind of, it's the scary part, is like, we were actually thinking about possibly giving her more on the 20 side, on the 28 year side, but then we started hearing the testimony of the, the family, and it just seemed like they were forgiving, and I was just mm. trying to figure out, like, what he would want, because based on his family, and then so I was just like, well, let's just give her 10 years. So I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> like, okay, first of all, people were upset with that. I mean, I'm just gonna talk on the other side. People who, why they were upset. They were mm -hmm. upset with the whole him, you know, uh, hugging Amber at the end, the, the brother yeah, they didn't, of the A lot of deceased. people actually didn't like that. Right, mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't. And, um, but, and then you find out with the jury that that, well, maybe not that obviously, because the verdict in the sentencing had already happened, but the way that they were during you know, court and everything mm -hmm. was what actually changed the jury's mind. Um, yeah. But the, they also said that the reason why they actually found her guilty was when they brought in, because she had racist uh, texts and um, oh. messages mm -hmm. that they found. Mm -hmm. And that was like one of the last evidence that they had at the end. So that's what really set it off for them to say she was guilty. Oh, interesting. See, there's so many layers with that kind of stuff. And, and it's really not... Um it's not it's not actually like the best way to decide sentencing if it's based partially on just how they behave that day but even judges yeah. do that too because i um you know i would be in the back room with some judges and one judge might say you know if he had come out and been even kind of apologetic today i might have you know mm. been a little bit more lenient but he you know he pretty much cussed in my face and so he got he got like the max that i could give him it's like oof, yeah you know <laughs> it's like ooh, maybe it should be more based on like the actual crime like on the actual date was committed and all that stuff but um but these are these are things that like criminal justice reform it really is a big issue because yeah. um there are such wild differences in sentencing and like you said the jury was able to be swayed just by it's like oh well the, the you know people are forgiving of her so i guess we can be right you uh. know it's like a peer pressure um, sentencing <laughs> and as Christians I think there's a big dilemma and I hear mm -hmm. people on both, both sides I obviously I'm a born-again Christian and I know that we should forgive and I what he did was right to forgive yeah Sen you know period it's a very like WWJD thing happening right yeah right but the <laughs> the problem is that I mean, we are trying to become more like Christ and that is our journey. Mm -hmm. But I have, I mean, that was my first reaction was, man, like it still hurt for me to see that hug. Like seriously, like all the black men that never got a, you know, an option when it comes to like police brutality and stuff like mm -hmm. that, which does happen. We're not saying at the levels, but it does happen. It is, it is absolutely um, true and that there's been a lot of injustice and especially mm -hmm. a lot of injustice in you know the actual you know public opinion sphere right I'm sure there's a lot yeah. more happening but we don't see you know the Trayvon Martins like stuff like that right those are the the big ones and so I for me I think it is more that hug was more than just him obviously that doesn't make sense but it was more than just him it was you were representing like he was representing like I know it's kind of weird to say, but the black community, mm. right? And I think that's why so many people were upset because that they didn't feel like she deserved that. I don't know if that. Makes yeah, sense. and I mean, no, it does. It does. I mean, it's it's always a give and take with this because the other thing that 
I mean, it's not necessarily a drug war issue, but this idea that it's like, oh, I busted into the wrong apartment and like somebody died. It's like that's this. These yeah. are issues that happen with the police all, you know, all across the country. And a lot of that stuff doesn't really get that much publicity. And then we have a story where someone is killed, you know, s- allegedly by accident um, right. because someone was in the wrong apartment. And, um, you know, they're 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 basically embraced you know and instantly forgiven and i can see why some people might be frustrated about that um but i do think it it was just refreshing to see only because we have so much hatred and so much anger um, in our country that to see someone like extend kindness to someone that way but i also understand why people would be angry and why people would expect him to be angry too Right. And then I think that's another thing. People don't know that this has been going on for last year. He was killed in September of last year. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't just an instantaneous like, you know what? I'm just going to decide to forgive her. Like they've had a year, which I mean, could take people decades to forgive someone. So Mm -hmm. a year, I mean, at least is better than just right. You know? Yeah. And I'm I'm just checking with our producer to see what the status is with our guest. Oh. Oh, okay, Let, <laughs> yeah, we were just waiting for you. Because <laughs> like, I actually, I would love to hear what Maj thinks about all of this. So, um, Maj, can you hear us? Maj. Hmm. Oh, I can't hear him. Oh, oh a there, bit. there. I can hear him a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Mm, can can the bit. audience hear him or people in the live chat? Can they hear him? It's a little low. Yeah, it's a little low. It's a little low. Uh-huh. No, no, not, not on your end. It's our end. <laughs> that was loud in my uh, ears. That was cool. That was cool. Um, and our, thank you for your patience while we get um, our audio working here. Hmm? Do your thing. Good. Are we good? Okay. Um, well, Maj, thank you so much for being on uh, our podcast tonight. How are you doing? I'm one. I'm one. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> We're good. We're good. So you just finished. I'm guessing the Larry Sharp show, <laughs> not Larry Elder. Yeah, Larry I'm, Sharp. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. A, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm right in front, in front of where he, uh, films, films now. now. I just stepped, stepped out. out and finished, finished it up. It was. It was a, uh, a very, very good episode. episode. We, talked we talked about libertarianism. We talked about the city. Uh, city, uh, city, council city council run. run. We talked about immigration. We talked about homophobia. We talked about. We talked about homophobia. Okay. Cool. Wow. Well, I'm gonna awesome. watch that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, did you get to hear uh, any of our discussion that we were having? Um. Just now. Yeah, a little bit of it. Yeah. So, what are what are your thoughts? Um, you you can jump in on any of the any of the various issues that this trial and this verdict raises. I came in, I came in on the tail end of the Bolton uh, Jean uh, murder. murder. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't do, do forgiveness. That's not. That's not. Um, um, that's, 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 that's not my thing. thing. Um, I, I, think I think it's, it's an internal, internal move. Each individual, Each individual has, the right has the right to forgive. To forgive but my, me, my, me and my friends, um, um, if somebody, if somebody kills, kills me, they're not, they're not forgiving my killer. killer. They're going to try, try to kill my killer. killer. Mm. And that's just, and that's what, just it what it is with me. With me. So, so um, as far as, as, far as like, uh, uh, like like uh, each individual person person having the right, I think his brother, if that's how he chose to express himself, um, I, think um, I think he's cool. cool. I, think I think the judge, the judge was. I ain't never, I ain't never seen, seen a judge hug no, no killer ever. Ever. Right. Um, yeah, me um, neither. I, I, I've, I've never, never, I've never seen. seen um, um, there was a bunch, was a bunch of things that I thought was really weird, weird to that. That, that, that also, also did go did into, go into um, that, that to, be to be perfectly honest, in my opinion, light, light sentencing. Oh, oh yeah. I think everyone believes that. Right. I hope most people believe that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 but, I, I, but you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. A, lot a lot of people was coming up with reasons why of why it was justified. Oh, you know, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, been, a it's been a lot of conservatives, and I'm looking at, and I'm like, and I'm like a lot, a lot of them is just like pro police, police or, like, like the police can do no wrong, and I don't really agree with that. You know what I mean? Police can do good, police can do wrong. Yeah, that's and I think in this scenario, you know, the reality is, I don't care why you, what you meant to do, you killed somebody. Okay. As 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 a CCW holder, right? Um. If I, if I kill someone, kill someone I, have I have to prove use of, use of deadly, deadly force. I have to, I have prove, to prove I can kill, I can someone, kill someone accidentally and you still, and go, you to still go to jail. I have friends, I have friends that, are that are in jail for weed, weed for longer. For longer. They'll, do They'll do longer, longer than, 10 than 10 years. Big, Big Meech. Um, Maj, Maj, first, I don't want to s- uh, stop you, but do you have headphones? I think there's an echo. Uh, uh, no, I don't, no, got, I don't got You don't have headphones? Okay, all right. We'll make do. Um, um, I'm gonna try, I'm to, gonna try to turn, turn it down, down a little bit. Yeah, 
Okay. Yo, yo, y'all got, y'all got me. I'm, yeah. I'm, if, I if I turn it down, some y'all, it'll, it'll, it'll a little better. Yeah, I think it's fine for now. Okay. okay. I mean, we can't do anything about it. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I want to hear what you're saying. Big, big Meech, you know, you know, is doing, is doing 30, thirty years for cocaine, for cocaine and, there's and there's no homicide, no homicide attached, attached to that. That was the first time drug drug offense. And he was, and he was hit with a kingpin status, status for you know, you know, for things, for things. And, and, and that's someone buying cocaine, cocaine and, selling and selling cocaine, cocaine or whatever. Or whatever. Um, um, and that person's in jail for thirty years. Okay. Okay. Um, the young lady that, or the elder, she's a granny now. That Kim Kardashian assisted other activists and lawyers to get home. She had did twenty years. For first, for first time, time drug offense, offense and no, and one, no was one was murdered. So, so right. um, and I know the situations, situations are different. Are different. Every, scenario Every scenario isn't exactly the same. The same. But, but as, if, as, I if I shoot somebody, or if, or if I'm negligent, negligent with, with my firearm, firearm I leave it around in an unsafe or safe irresponsible, irresponsible child, child including, including me, me uh, being uh, unsafe, unsafe or irresponsible, uh, that child gets access to it and they kill himself. I'm probably I'm probably going to do you know a decent amount of time, right? Rightfully so, in my opinion. So, so um, I don't think, I don't that, we think that we get some forgiveness, forgiveness before, before we get justice, we get justice served. served. You know, we you know, were just, we just talking about this on Larry, Larry Sharp show where it's like, if you stab, if you stab me, in me in the back and just say, just say six, six inches, inches and you pull, you pull the blade, blade out three out inches, inches I'm, I'm the blade's the blade's still in me three, three inches. inches. I haven't had a chance to get the blade out or heal from the trauma. So I'm not trying to have a conversation about forgiveness before I've even healed. I think it's very Stockholm Syndrome-ish. Um, and I think that it's corny. And for me and mine, you know, if I, I'm going to just be very clear. Forgiveness is something, you know, um, you just you don't need forgiveness if you OK with your decisions in the first place. So for me, I don't need to forgive anybody um, because of the fact that, you know, you knew what you was doing. And, uh, you know, I, I don't really do the forgiveness for things like that, for people that to the extent where someone is raping or killing myself or my family members forgiveness ain't coming that easy you know what i mean I, mm -hmm. um that's that you know you take that up with your god you know so that's that's just how i am and maybe that's just because of where i'm from you know but if you if you on the other side you on the other side you know if somebody comes into my home and harms one of my children mm -hmm. you know well i it ain't fuck mm -hmm. you that's it's forever fuck you yeah. You know, and that's just how I am with it, especially in the, in, in the, in the, you know, and I know it was, again, that this happened a year ago, but you can't kill my brother and I'm hugging you a year later. That's just how I'm built. And, you know, so that's, that's kind of the tail end of the conversation. So that I what do you think about the whole concept of the fact of forgiveness being solely helping the person who is forgiving? That it's not about the other person. That it's that person who's forgiving that person I and mean, healing that be. person and with forgiveness. Again, so, so I'm not mad at the brother. That is how he copes with and deals with. And I could label it or diagnose it as whatever. Mm -hmm. But if that's the decision and that's freedom, he yeah. has the right to view it that way. Like he said on the stand, um, that he's speaking totally for himself. He's not even speaking for the other family members at that moment. Right. You know, and I, I get that. You know, he has the I'm not cold to the point where I can't understand somebody else being forgiving. And like he said, he's forgiving to her for what she did and so forth and so on. And that's cool. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, I've cheated on people in my relationships in the past and they've forgiven me. And some people some people might go, oh, you cheated. You took you, you were disloyal to me. You know, I'll never forgive you. And they have that right as well. You know, um, so I'm not I'm not mad at the person doing the forgiving. I just me as an individual, I can't not think about forgiving you until justice and healing has happened. And if you just got sentenced today, you know, I can't I, I ain't really, you know, I ain't in that space. But again, maybe for him, his his forgiving capabilities are faster because it's been a year, you know, and us on the outside. We don't we don't we haven't lived with that for a year to the same extent as that brother has, you know? Right. So I get the reason behind forgiving, you know, but um, I believe that there's certain things that you don't come back from. And I'm not, I, 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 I'm down with the Hammurabi's code. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I choose justice over forgiveness uh, 
all every day of the week and twice on Sundays. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's me as an individual. Mm-hmm. Do we have any um, anybody who's wanting to ask questions before I? Because I have a lot more, but I know we're gonna get. Nah. No. <laughs> no. No. I, okay. I, I think everybody just uh, cool. a little yeah. a little bit more about the echo. No, not that. Just a little more on board with with Maj. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. I mean, I appreciate his honesty. And I actually, I don't think that I would have, if it were me and that were my brother, I don't think I would have been able to do that. Like, genuinely. I don't think I would have been able to do that. And, um, like, I I I feel you. (laughs) I I (laughs) also don't see it as a sign of strength like everybody's saying. Mm. I don't. Well. I I don't see it as a sign. Everybody's like, oh, that was, you know, I don't know who paid him to do that. I don't. Then, mm. then the person that recorded, the person that recorded, you know, that scenario, that person gets fired from their job this week. Then the person that was oh, a key yeah. witness gets mm-hmm. murdered. Right. I don't know if he got paid to do that. Like, and I know that might seem conspiracy theorist to a degree, but mm. the oh, reality oh. is, I don't see that as a sign of strength. I see that as a sign of you trying to do something, you know, and, and maybe to them is strength, but to me. You know, yeah. Um, I that ain't a sign of strength to me. I I can forgive for things, and I can even if I do forgive over time. You know, um, I don't gotta fuck with you. You know right. what I mean? I, I've 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 forgiven people that said they was gonna you know do certain things for Black Guns Matter, but I still don't fuck with you. I've forgiven people for you know th- th- their deception in political circles and their deception in the gun community. I still don't fuck with you. You know, and I think there's there's a thin line there. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness is internal. Yeah. That, right. That external show of hugging and all of that right. shit right. that's theater to me. Mm. Right. That's and theater. and I think that's what where I think a lot of people felt like they would cross the line. It's like, look, you can forgive, but then to basically just show everybody that as if like we're all okay with this, um, I think is where people get upset and uh, you were talking about the nonviolent crimes and I mean my dad went to prison for 20 years for Mm -hmm. for selling for selling drugs and so yeah it I I get pissed off when I see that stuff (laughs) yeah and I I, when I was a law clerk I saw people go to jail for much longer or to prison really for much longer than that for either you know they 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 messed up on their drug test too many times when they were on probation and just bam it's like 15 right. years in prison wow. you know right. so uh yeah i mean I, I i also agree that that sentence was light um, Look, and, yeah. and all of the people that saying this forgive 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 right i say this to them i'm in new york right now i'm in manhattan we say forgive or we forget if you believe that it was terrorists that did you know or if it was arab terror or whatever terrorists mm. that did 9 11 right are we as Americans forgiving those people? If you believe that story, are mm-hmm. we forgiving the people that supposedly, you know, blew up the, the, the World Trade Centers? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I also noticed on social media, a lot of the people who were adamant about, you know, and showing and retweeting his video didn't say anything the day before about the verdict. Right. Yeah, I think right. you should talk about justice, but you should also talk about forgiveness. You're going to talk about forgiveness, talk about justice, and they are not mutually exclusive. And right. especially as Christians, we should be celebrating when there is actual justice and we should be heartbroken and grieving with those when there's not justice and also um, forgiving when, you know, when other people can't. But I, I think there's only it was very lopsided. I saw the people who said nothing and who were silent the mm-hmm. day before who were now suddenly, you know, excited about, you know, how it ended up with the forgiveness aspect of things. And I, I think I think them type of dudes that do that is doing that. That's like that's like that's like I used to go to open mics, right? <clears throat> and guys that would pretend to be so deep to like get girls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like they doing that that whole like, "Oh, look how powerful this is." No, it's not. <laughs> you're saying that because you want to appear like you're that forgiving. These are the same. Right. Things. I can, I can. If you pick somebody that posted that video, these are the same people that say, "I'm not going to forgive these terrorists." I'm depending on their job or title or all of that. No, man. What's strong is justice. What's strong 
is being honest, which wrong is being objective, which, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just not convinced. I think a lot of that is the same type of theater. You want to show how forgiving as a Christian or whatever. And again, you have the right to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. But it's like, nah, man, y'all, y'all, it's a contradiction. If you are saying that, then that means I want to see those same red, white, and blue flag waving people. I want them to say, I've, if you believe that story that there was these terrorists that flew planes into the 9-11 and that's why they fell over like they was in a controlled demolition site, if you believe that, I want to hear you say, because that was uh, uh, however many you know decades ago, I want to hear you say, I forgive those men too. Yeah, and maybe we I could end all the wars that, that are that, based that on that. You forgive Timothy McVeigh for blowing up you know the mm-hmm. Oklahoma City mm-hmm. bombing thing. I want to hear you say, you know, uh, the, the black people are saying that. I want to hear you say that you're forgiving the woman that got Emmett Till killed. I want to hear you say yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And me, I ain't in that space. Maybe I'm too much of a Philadelphian, I suppose, or an American. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, or a speak- warrior. I don't give a fuck about forgiveness to somebody that that has that has wronged a scenario. I'm not. I don't know. It just—I just feel like it's, it, it comes off a little too, right. like, why, why, why is the forgive? You, you want us to forgive certain things, but then at certain points, you want us to stop bringing up old shit, right. and then the same time you say never forget. I know. Mm-hmm. Hashtag want, never forget. Or right. Whatever. That is true. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of Philly, I, I'm, we brought you on and um, mostly to talk about your run in Philadelphia mm-hmm. uh, for city council. And uh, just for our audience, can you talk about your run? What actually what brought you to even run? Like what made you finally well, like that was the last straw? Like I'm running. Um, it, it left up to me. I wouldn't have ran um, initially. Um, it was a few people. Um, mostly it was G. G was like, yo, you got this. You should do this. And I was like, nah, bro, we, we about to finish up the, you know, one leg of the tour. You know what I mean? Um, but then in, in talking with her and then, you know, I had guys like, like Larry Sharp, mm-hmm. you know, guys, on, guys, that, uh, libertarians that have done lots of work for the cause, like, uh, Mike Heist, that was just like, yo, man, this is something that you really, really should do. I think Philly really could use a public servant like yourself. Um, and so um, among those things, it was just like, all right, cool. Let's, you know, let's see, let's see how this goes. But, um, I understand why I've, I talked to Rob Pincus about this and he was like, there's a reason why so few people do what you're doing as far as running for office, you know, the, the, the time, the energy, the, the, the time away from your family and campaigning. And, mm-hmm. you know, we already was running, you know, a, a, the BGM campaign, um, taking the seat. I see the benefit of it. So, to not do it, you run around and you educate all of these people about firearm safety, conflict resolution. You link up with great trainers and great instructors and great lawyers all around the country. And then in, in your city, which is Philadelphia is very um, liberal, um, how corny would it be if you've educated or helped other people educate and join forces with other people to educate so many people about the Second Amendment and firearms ownership? And then some little nerd, dweeb, pencil pusher gets on the city council seat and they make like, they ban semi-automatic <laughs> guns in your city. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you needed to kind of be like a voice of reason um, on city council. Now you in that peer group. You know, there's a difference between speaking from the outside as well as speaking from the inside. So I don't think it should be either or. I think we should do both. So for me, all right, cool. I'll I'll run and I'll I'll be the person that's willing to be uh, the person that's uh, on the inside and the outside to speak for the people. So that's really you know how we came to it. Uh, the election is November the fifth. Uh, we mm-hmm. you know less than thirty days away. Um, I think it's going to be great. Um, and and you know I I look forward to learning more about uh, public service um, and and learning more about my city uh, about my city from a, from a political standpoint being more of an insider uh you know so that's kind of like why i ran and, and why I'm, I'm continuing to but it i learned a lot about you know campaign finance rules and you know i learned a lot about the libertarian party i learned yeah, a lot I about you know about uh, yeah 
uh, why Philadelphia is 80% Democrat and all of these different things. So it's been a weird and very interesting ride. Um, but I, I can't really be too mad at it. But, uh, you know, as, 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 you know, once we take that seat, uh, I'm definitely going to be in the peer group when I'm going to be vetoing or, you know, voting nay on any uh, anti-gun measure that come across my desk. Well, good for you. If I lived in Philly, you would have my vote 100%. Um, and I was going to ask specifically, you had mentioned the Libertarian Party and that you learned a lot about that. I'm, I'm a Libertarian myself. I, uh, Antonia refers to herself more as a conservative, but I really, I'm a Libertarian. I'm, um, so, but I'm, I'm just curious. There's a lot of bickering in the Libertarian community about is the Libertarian Party the best way to pursue our goals or should, I don't know, some people just don't like voting at all. But, um, mm-hmm. but why did you choose to, to be in the Libertarian Party for your run? And do you think that's the best way for us to pursue liberty in general? Yeah, so for for years I was a registered Republican for years, mm-hmm. and I think the Republican Party right now I'm running into more and more rhinos, like <laughs> like yep. it's just it's just more and more rhinos like all over the place, and they have not changed their PR in urban America. They haven't. They've been trash at it. Um, so it's like nah. And I already was in I I ideologically. Um, I was already kind of like more on the liberty side of it. So it was like, okay, if I'm going to run for office, why would you go into a town that's 80% Democrat and believes that Republicans are all racist? And if you're a Republican, it's, you're definitely not for the community. I'm not putting myself in that position when I identify with libertarian ideology, mm-hmm. as well as I don't run the risk of like, I'm, I'm not running as a Democrat. That's not happening. I know too much, <laughs> you know? And so... <laughs> Um, why not split the difference and have a balance where I can be critical of the right and the left, or excuse me, or Republicans, you know, R's and D's, as well as I can be supportive when R's and D's are right. And doing that from a more balanced perspective where I'm not running into, oh, you a Republican, you such and such and such. Right. And if I'm, you know, and I, and I have Republican following across the nation mm-hmm. that I've had a person, a very prominent Republican tell me, Maj, if you're going to run, I'm going to just let you know, if Jesus Christ came back and ran as a Democrat, I would not vote for Jesus Christ. <laughs> so it's like, OK, well, they're being very clear, you. <laughs> you know, and so for me, it's just a way to get people out of this duopoly. Like, yeah. yo, both parties right now, for the most part, are selling bullshit. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Sorry. You can't say I'm Republican, I'm pushing for Republican values, but then at the same time you're pushing for more and more bans on certain things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, that that that's just that's just not no, sorry. Or yeah, it's we're for a small rhinos. government, I'm but we're just more gonna and, more rhinos. Mm-hmm. and so it's like, why put myself in that space when I I I do uh believe that I want less government. I know that. I know the hood identifies with that. You know, we, we're not pushing for more democratic principles that have crippled uh, urban centers around the country. We're not doing that, mm-hmm. you know. So there's there's a balance there. And I think that um, you can as a libertarian, I'm, 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 I'm still more, quote unquote, right leaning. Um, yeah. It's just that the, the Republican Party got horrible PR. The Democratic Party has not done enough for, you know, urban America and libertarian is a, is a viable option. For people that want to get outside of that duopoly so that's that's the reason why i ran as a uh, libertarian but at the same time i've all i've been in, in in alignment with libertarian ideology um you know i've read rothbard when i was 19 20 years old me too so like, yeah i ain't really <laughs> you know and and when you explain to people it's like okay cool and i know the hood but i identify with it and i'd had i'd had much less of a headache um translating that so you know all the stars aligned in that way and I think that it's a viable party. It being the third largest party in the country, I think it's time for us to try something different. You know. I got a question for you, Foo. Sure. So you keep me- mentioning urban America. I'm on this kick of where I want my people represented in the two A community, and they're not. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. is it important for your people to be represented? Whether and, and and when you say urban America, for me as a Mexican that grew up in the hood, you're speaking about me as well. But why is it so yep. important? Because there's a lot of people that are like, oh, we're all Americans. 
<laughs> so uh, yeah, you, you got to break it down to everybody on why that's so important. Well, I mean, technically, I mean, if you, whatever landmass you in, all right, you that. But there's, <laughs> I mean, everything has gradation and layers. And just because someone's Mexican American or African American or European American or Asian American, like there's a cultural difference that we have to be respectful of, especially in a space where, okay, the current order of the day, motherfuckers want to act like my Mexican homies only is good for here, for like to to like do crime or like clean some shit up and get the fuck out of here with that. Mm-hmm. That has been a dominant theme, and if. The largest um, ethnic group uh, is Mexican Americans, and if they've been they've been positioned to look like a servant class, they might, they better have some fucking firearms too, and that representation mm-hmm. needs to pop off. And I think and, and it's, you're absolutely right when I say urban America. I mean if you in the hood, if you're in urban America, and that's a melting pot. Eighty percent of Americans live in cities now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's a bigger percentage. You know, more than the suburban or rural areas. Um, I think that it's very key to me, for example, my organization called Black Guns Matter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whether you're talking about black guns, black people, whatever, we all in that mix. I think that um, to identify culturally while still understanding um, the concept of America is an ideal. It's an ideal of, yo, because everybody on this joint is immigrants. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Period. Irish, um, European, black people are immigrants. We, you, we were, we were forced here. Mm-hmm. But, well, that's not immigration, but you get my point, though, <laughs> right? So that we, hey, we, we were Africans forcibly immigrated here. <laughs> black people outside of the natives to this land that happen to be melanated beings, right? Because all of us came. Some of us came here before Columbus. So I want to throw that in there too. But I think that identifying with your cultural and ethnic heritage and still identifying with the concept of America and I also highlighting there are some people in this place that want to keep America like or, or, or want to make America seem like it was always white all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that those true. type of people is good to to identify, you know, and respect different cultures that without like somebody trying to tell somebody oh since you're mexican or since you're black or since you're you know uh nigerian or whatever you know or if you're white you you have to fit in this particular box Nah, because no i don't i can identify with the ideology and of america as well as respect my heritage and my culture mm-hmm. and anyone that right. can't respect that balance no different than my irish homies it's like yeah i'm american or my italian homies it's like yeah i'm american but i'm italian american and my lineage is here here and here I think that's what makes America actually strong. And mm-hmm. the people that's trying to pretend like to get you to converge just into one, one, um, like Borg to just be like <laughs> one thing all of the way to like you ignoring, um, your, your, your ethnicity or your culture or your heritage. I think they straight up wrong. So I yeah. think more people should highlight and say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm American, but I'm Mexican American. Mm-hmm. That does not mean that I'm isolating myself. That means I'm respecting both sides. That balance is key. And I think that when you pick one or the other, if you're Mexican and you just go, oh, I'm American, and you try to hide your ethnicity, that's corny. I think if you Mexican and you live in America and you're just saying, nah, I'm not American, yo, that's like actually not their reality and the diversity. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I just want to I want to comment on two things that you said that I think are really important. The first is that both sides are trying to use Hispanics in, in a way that are ju- it's, it's just awful. Like the the Republicans or the R's kind of are saying, you know, these are people coming in who are criminals and blah, blah, blah. And then on the other side, we're, they're being treated like they're just here to be servants, like they're here to be an right. underclass of illegal, you know, people who don't have the same rights as us, but still can get paid under the table for the sake of having cheaper labor. You know, it's really I, I just want to highlight that because there is a duopoly there where both sides really are just not treating the Hispanic population well. But I also right. and, go ahead. And yeah, don't be just trying to ship more people in because black people is going to different demographic, so you can have a stronghold on the democratic voting base. Yeah, and that's another form of the soft bigotry of low expectations mm-hmm. to think that oh, just because somebody's Spanish or Mexican 
then that we, we isolate in that group to only wanting to be serviced. But nobody in their mind said, okay, well, what about even down to like immigration? Okay, so no nobody's going to talk about Indians right, or Africans, Asians yeah. or Europeans. Right. It's like, come on, man. Like, stop that silly shit. You know what I mean? And it's like, mm-hmm. if you're American and if you're aspiring to these ideals, that does not mean to the exclusion or disrespect for your own ethnicity or heritage. Yeah. And if you're not doing both of those, you're either trying to hide your own history or you're trying to not deal with your current reality and where you at right now. Either one of those, you're doing yourself a disservice. You strengthen yourself by doing both. I'm mm-hmm. from urban America. My lineage is African American. My direct lineage, you know, is people that may have been brought over here from other parts of the world forcibly mm-hmm. that sustained through some of the worst uh, periods of human history, the Mafia, the, the, the African Holocaust. That's a mm-hmm. part of my history now, bro. And ain't nobody going to take that away from me. My last name is Toure. That's West African. It's not like it's West African royalty, but I live the fuck in America. You know what I'm saying? And ain't nobody going to try to make me. I got African history and, and, and lineage with American privilege. And I dare you to tell me I can't have both. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. My Mexican, Jewish, I know that's a religion, but, you know, whatever. My Them Irish folks that came over here, the Asians and they lineage that was building railroads, they got that Asian work ethic mm-hmm. as well as they got American motherfucking privilege. And I dare you to tell them different. We got to own both sides of that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and Tony, you Igbo, right? Yeah, Nigerian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, all right, cool. Don't tell her she can't have both of those things. Fuck is you talking about? Like, we have to own that. And that's why I be telling Edgar, like, oh, Edgar, come to my stuff. I don't listen. They ain't asked me to even be a part of none of this. And they definitely t- not inviting me to do a lot of stuff now. But it's like, so I'm still going. Like, so, <laughs> yep. You know what I'm saying? Who gonna, tell, who gonna tell me? Who gonna check me? You know right. what I'm saying? So we really got to take, because these are, our, we have these human rights to exist, to be, to travel, to defend. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And anybody that would try to isolate any of me and my homies to, to, to like, uh, subject status, I mean, you could try that. I, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it. You know what I'm saying? But we gotta, we gotta make sure that we own in that in our own right, regardless of how somebody else view it. Yeah. Before we let you go, I really wanted to talk about what happened uh, just this weekend in in Chicago um, yeah. with that open whatever festival. I don't know what it was. Um, yeah. But can you talk more about that? Because I've seen a little bit of the a uh, couple of the clips that you were, especially with the, some of those kids. So can you talk yeah. about more of that experience, what happened there? Because that was crazy. Yeah, so that's called the Open. The Economist magazine did that. Okay. And that was put together by the March for Our Lives people mm. Okay, and the Economist. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why they thought, like, putting me on a panel with, <laughs> with younger people because they just happened to be melanated that I wasn't going to treat them the right, same. Right. Like, no, nah, you off the porch now. Like, you, you, you grown. <laughs> You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But what happened there was that was a forum and it, it definitely was put together by anti-gun sentiments. Um, you know, but facts and logic is facts and logic. Um, so that what what you saw was me refuting the devil. You know, um, that was that was me just like um, getting rid of falsehoods and facts uh, and, and, and non-facts with facts. Um, on a panel that was about, you know, uh, how do we safely move forward um, to, to mitigate trauma? Um, and to me, I turn them type of conversations as, yeah, we can, we can mitigate trauma and all of that, but we're going to do that while preserving our freedoms. And so really it was, you know, uh, uh, I, want, I want to say this too. We in the gun community have to pay attention. A year ago, two years ago, there were not as many, maybe three, years ago there were not as many melanated beings from different different ethnicities being highlighted in the anti-gun movement Mm -hmm. they're recognizing the work that we're doing at black guns matter and other organizations and the anti-gun side is adapting Mm -hmm. we may not be adapting but they are um no different than the panel that i was in when i testified in congress it was all anti-gun but they were all melanated beings They've learned that they can't just have white people talking 
anti-gun talking points mm -hmm. to, you know, Mexicans, Spanish, you know, and they're getting younger, too. Yeah. So I don't care if you 17, 18, once you off the steps and you get into <laughs> a grown person's conversation, mm -hmm. I got to handle you the same way I would handle anybody else. So I don't personally care. But I know that that, that sentiment could work on somebody else. So I want to make sure that we paying attention to their adaptation. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to, I see Edgar, Edgar has his children at the shop, running the shop, doing the work. They came to the uh, Denver Guns Day uh, at Bristol Cone, you know what I mean? Which yeah. is beautiful, you know? And so um, what happened there was a lot of them spewing a lot of the rhetoric. And fortunately, a few days before this event over the weekend in Chicago, um, the FBI stats came out for violent crime as well as uh, licenses to carry mm -hmm. going up 1.4 million in 2018 and violent crime decreasing. So I had that in the top. And those mm -hmm. are irrefutable stats that they can't really get around. Uh, but they tried and they tried with emotional reasons of right. I'm young and I'm from the community and I'm black too. So we should be able to ask for more gun control. And I just kindly was telling them like, nah, that's not, that's not what my hood is asking for. You don't speak for my hood. You're, you're welcome to speak for yourself. You don't want a gun? Cool. Don't have one. I ain't mm -hmm. tripping. I'm going to defend your right to not have one. But don't tell us what we're going to do in the hood or urban America or think because you happen to be Latin or whatever or Asian and young and say you from. This is a new thing that they're doing, too. They're saying things like, well, my father has guns. My, my father served in the military, mm -hmm. you know, but nah. It's no. cool. Your dad still ain't handling you on the Second Amendment thing right, if that's even true. So right. that's what happened at that event. Um, it was it was really four against one. I Bruce Lee the whole motherfucking situation. <laughs> of course, you, know I mean? you did, I and won. I wish you could show it, that. Maybe we'll yeah, get the clip. It was, it was, I think that people, you know, um, it's a sport for me, but I do think that people watching because that was um, that was being uh, 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 streamed globally uh, from three different countries at the same time. Chicago. Who's the Economist? Uh, man, it's big. Yeah. Yeah, the economist is huge. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that that's what that event was. But I I was pleased with you know um, what they tried to do and what they were not able to do. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's why it's very important for us to go to those anti-gun forums and make sure that we our presence is felt for sure. Absolutely, and I'm and so glad that you were there. Yeah, I was just gonna say thank you so much for doing the work in the urban communities as well because we hear people say things like the Second Amendment is a uh, um, they'll say that it's like an urban versus rural issue or they'll try to make it about, oh, the people who really need or mm -hmm. want guns are the ones who have to deal with wild animals in their yards or something like that. Mm -hmm. But really, if you, my parents grew up in Third Ward, Houston. I don't know if you're familiar, but um, my my parents know how dangerous it is to be in the hood. I have, right. the, I have, they, my dad got me as far away from that as he possibly could because he didn't want me to yeah. be going through that. But the idea that a single woman walking down the street, walking home at night couldn't benefit from uh, learning how to use a firearm and concealed carrying or that um uh, you know you wouldn't be able to defend yourself in a city properly or that that's not a it's not an issue for urban america it's just ridiculous to me i think that right. the urban places need the second amendment almost more than anyone so right. um, if not more to be honest yeah right. yeah um so thank you so much for bringing that issue back into the urban center because so many people want to make it about hunting or about uh, oh all goodness. of that but it's not it's about individuals and like you said 80 percent of americans live in cities so if we right. get rid of the second amendment in cities we're you know destroying the rights of the vast majority right. of americans guns guns are to shoot bad people Mm -hmm. Whether they are robbers, rapists, people coming to kill you, or corrupt governments. Let's mm -hmm. be very clear right. about that. Yeah. Guns are to shoot bad people. Mm hmm And Period. Self defense <laughs> for anyone from <laughs> anyone that, that would and do and you harm. You could hunt a deer with it too. Alright, cool. Added bonus. Yeah. Right. It has <laughs> nothing to do with our it. rights. No That's the thing. It's the hunting argument. Right. They try to use that at the at the assault weapon to the Republicans. And I was like, please mm -hmm. take out hunting from this conversation. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with that. And that is why I saw the left starting to use that that whole narrative because they're like, look, we don't want to do anything with hunting. Look, I hunt. 
my friends hunt it's all good but you know stuff like that is like does, that's cool has nothing to do with my right to self defense you, you know you know how you got to blame that on who started that wave you I gotta know. Blame Ronald Reagan for that. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of Reagan. stuff we have to blame him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he was he was he was very instrumental in that man. And it's like my homies is more Republican. I'm like, yo, dude wasn't cool, man. On that on that at least, dude wasn't cool, you know. And so, but again, we have we have information now. Mm-hmm. We have history. We can. Well, we just got to be more vocal about being honest and mm-hmm. saying. Giving credit where it's due and giving critique where it's due and not having this sycophant, like cultish, slavish attachment to one person or one party. Oh, yeah. No one is above reproach. No one is above critique. Even me. I own my contradictions. And when somebody go, <laughs> my he was tripping. I got to go, damn, you right, well, I was tripping a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And when we can do that. Right. You know, we, we, we slide out of we lean more towards principles and what's good for liberty and our freedoms more so than solely, you know, what's only going to be good for the people that I like in my particular party. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things I was saying the other day to some of my uh, libertarian friends. I was like, I, I, I am not loyal to any party. It doesn't matter or any politician. I'm loyal to ideas. And if someone right. is actually going to promote those ideas and help those ideas come into being, that's the person I'm going to support. Those are the people I'm going to try to, you know, um, get in, get to have power. But I'm not just going to help vote for someone because they have an R next to their name or whatever mm-hmm. letters next to their name or because, right. you know, they, they I, I look at voting records and stuff, too. I don't you, it's not just about talk what have you actually done as well right. so um, absolutely yeah you can't I don't know loyalty to liberty is is where we Ooh, should all be that's a t-shirt bro <laughs> yeah I'll put a little trademark on that <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, <"Dang." laughs> Maj do it tonight do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while we wait for a um, a question from Sir Wesley Hall that's that's pimp right there Sir <laughs> Wesley Hall. I just want to add. I, I'm. I'm. I know. I'm still in your guys' platform. No, it's um, okay. Go for it. <laughs> well, well we as Antonio as Antonio looks at me like you, mother, <laughs> <laughs> you better not. You let me use this space. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. No. <laughs> I do want to take it back uh, a little bit to what Maj was talking about, and this is why, because a lot of people that that are on the chat are kind of looking at me being vocal, and, and gun websites kind of challenge me a little bit which i enjoy um the challenge every single time on this whole mexican kid because if you go back in my history you know that that's not that's not me Mm -hmm. um cheryl todd um had mentioned something as if if we and she wasn't talking about it in this context and i get it but that's the 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 big point the left maj had mentioned how the left is using this how these segments they're, they're they're perfect at it and i and i get it it's identity pod- politics but it's working for them mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. not only that but it, it's brainwashing a lot of these cultures to think in, in a certain way and so it's already done it's already done mm-hmm. if if you ignore a certain sect in the second Am- uh, second amendment community they're not going to show up and they're, they're right. just not going to show up because of that loyalty like fuck there's nobody there representing me Mm-hmm. Why am I right. going to show up? Why is that important? Like they don't want me. I see stickers, and, and I get it. You, I, that th- this is not why I'm bringing it up. I don't want to get into that debate. But you see, uh, the gun rights policy. They had a table with stickers talking about build the wall taller and shit like that. So if you're a Mexican and you read, they're like, okay. So they want my cousins out. They don't want <laughs> Wait, my fire policy. Did that? Yeah, 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 right. yeah. They had a little spread. Yeah, and I actually see, like don't that. be blending, blending right? issues like that. And it's just like I'm just here f- for two way stuff, and now all of a sudden you're talking about you don't want mm-hmm. like the wall shit and stuff like that. Let's have that conversation somewhere else. Oh, I didn't have those. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, threw, you threw the ones that I had away. My year on. <laughs> I don't think you care. So, so look, so look. <laughs> that was we, awesome. was, we was at that gun rights policy conference, right? And. So first thing, they struggling with that because I was at one of them two years ago, and they put all of the black people on one panel. And I said it on the I said it on the panel. That's not diversity. That's isolation. 
mm. of segregation. Then I, I, I missed the one in Chicago last year, and I was at the one in Phoenix a few weeks ago. And <laughs> they put all of the black people and then the gay people all in the same panel. Mm. And it's like, yo, like, it, you're failing at this because you, you're doing this wrong. And when you have them type of bumper stickers, Bill, okay, so what Mexican person is going to come in and say, well, they don't mean me. <laughs> <laughs> like, if a Mexican person comes in and sees that sticker, well, damn, this is what this room is about? Oh, I'm good. I'm out. I, I'm first generation born. Half of my family is here illegally. So for, for me, it's it's like, yeah. yeah. It, that's definitely not you me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, again, that's part of that PR. That I'm like, this is this the conversation y'all like if everyone's attacking the the, the community you don't the, gu the gun community you think that you know throwing some of them little jabs in there you need as many hands on deck as possible mm -hmm. and if you think that first of all i know mexican people that are way a way lot fucking stronger than a lot of americans mentally you know what i'm saying like coming from a lot of people are very, very privileged. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, if you don't want strong hands on deck, what was wrong with you? And if you can't see the PR mistakes or choices that you're making that disassociates uh, certain more hands on deck, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Right. And I'm actually not interested in telling you. I'm actually just interested in getting to that demographic and making sure that I'm linking up with him and we create a show of force. It's the same thing that I said at that same panel in Chicago when the dude was like, well, I don't want to hear NRA talking points. Well, first and foremost, bro, I'm not a member of the NRA. It's a talking so point for him to say that I don't want to hear NRA talking points. Yeah. That's right. all they know about the NRA <laughs> is the that's the only Second Amendment organization. To, to, you know, mm -hmm. and so it's like, nah, if I don't see enough, I'm going to say something. Y'all see enough, yo, this room white as hell. <laughs> it's not a good representation of, or or even deeper. Pinker said something, and I thought it was true. He was like, "Yo, all of the black people, y'all just all hang out together. Like, what the fuck, man. Like, we trying to get away from that." And he was right in that logic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I get the point he's make. He's making that you can't. If we're saying we want to represent a uh, 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 culturally relevant representation of what the community actually is we can't segregate ourselves either we got to be like when we was in phoenix where we saw you know when we was there hanging out afterwards when we was hanging out afterwards and it was the pew pew jew and stilettos mm -hmm. and shotguns and and jake and pinkus and me and janine and all of these different types of people and argo that was more representative of what the gun culture and the gun community mm -hmm. actually is. Right. And it was no ego in there. You know what I'm saying? But when you try to do it where it's segmented, come on, man. Like, I thought we was getting away from that. You know, so those people that, that do that type of stuff, I can't really rock with them because I don't care what you say. I got Mexican homies. I got Jewish homies. I got black homies. I got, you know, uh, European homies. And there's certain things that it's like, nah, man. I'm not going out of my way to try to alienate people in a space to make a joke or you're not even paying attention to how um, insensitive you are. And I'm not saying you can't make jokes, but it's like, come on, bro. Like if we try to lean people in, like that's not that's not the way. That's not the way to do it. Mm -hmm. That's corny. That is mm -hmm. bias. That is bigotry. That is not inviting of people that are here working very, very hard. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's well, what, like, it's like that would that would be feel kind of like uh, me walking into seeing a bumper sticker saying there's there's no there's no Jordans or Henny over here. It's like first of all, I don't fucking wear Jordans, but and I second did of all, I like Guinness. <laughs> but well, it's like, but it's like, damn, bro, that's how you feel. Oh, all right, cool. 
Well, it just plays into that whole idea that all black people think the same and that right. if you're if you are a black person that cares about the Second Amendment, you're some kind of like token, you know, jewel that we need. Let's like, ooh, let's put all of the rare, the rare believers in the Second Amendment together. And it's something that bothers right. me because I'm French Creole, right? Like people don't know what my race is looking at me. And so I'll get the hate from people who just assume that I'm white and they'll say, oh, well, you only like gu- you only care about the Second Amendment because you're some white girl. It's like I'm actually not some white girl. Um, but then, you know, on the other side, people will say, oh, well, you know, you're 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 an Uncle Tom. You're abandoning your race because clearly you're mixed and you're you're going for you're voting for these policies. And you care about these policies that are just Republican talking points and Republicans don't like black people. And, you know, it just. It, no matter what my race is, I get pigeonholed, and I just think that it shouldn't be about that at all. Like, if we're going to have a gun panel, it should just be about, you know, who who cares about similar issues about gun policy? Let's put all of them on the same panel. Who's fighting for the same kinds of things? Let's put them on the same panel. Or maybe some people have some differing opinions, and so we can have some debate, and we'll have them on a panel. But, but, but here's the thing, though. If they keep doing it after I said it on the stage, and after it had, yeah, yo, y'all don't want to, there's no reason for them to change. There's no reason, it's no different than Eggers Point. Like mm. yo, what the fuck reason do they have to not put that dumbass um um bumper sticker out there? Like, it's like as opposed to just going like, all right, y'all ain't getting it, so I'm out. I'm not supporting this. And at the same time, hey, all of us that understand this, let's all click up and like work together. It don't have to come through a banner of some bigger quote unquote organization. That's it's like all it's almost like they're trying to reinvent the NRA wheel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then, well, I ain't d- down with that. And if, and I tried, you know, all right, y'all want diversity? Cool. We're going to come through being diverse. Diversity of thought, diversity of culture, diversity of whatever. Oh, no, that's not what you want. Okay, I tried. That ain't really what you want. And I'm going to tell the truth about that. If I'm going to a GRPC conference and I see build the wall higher, yo, that's offensive to my Mexican homies. That's offensive. That's offensive to my fucking South American homies. Fuck just Mexico for a second. Mm-hmm. It's offensive to fucking me. Well, yeah, it offends me for a variety of reasons. N- not, you know, mm. the whole idea of America having a wall is like one thing, but also all of the imminent domain that would happen to have to happen for that to occur. I mean, there's no, there's, mm, that should not be involved with the Second Amendment at all. They are not related Edgar, issues. Edgar, you got you to gotta get more vocal about it. Man, you got to start coming to my shit too. And get <laughs> Isaac lazy ass to come through as well. Well, <laughs> and, and that's definitely something that I've been uh, checking myself on it is the fact that I don't show up to these things. So I don't like to kiss ass. I absolutely hate to kiss ass. I'm not an ass right. kisser. And I, every time that I, I like push myself in, I feel like I have to kiss ass. And I don't have, I shouldn't have to kiss ass to speak at a spot like you guys are speaking at this thing like once again a mexican's not going to speak i was told and, and at this point i don't even give a fuck i was told if you show up you get to speak like i don't want pity like i don't want to show up and be like oh poor fat, fucking short fat mexican i guess he showed up so i guess we're gonna let him speak like that's bullshit to me i've, I've done the work already I, no, I went, i've been at this shit for 10 the, years I, I i went to grpc i speak uh, this year I haven't been since that first year. No, I've th- never been invited. There, there's another <laughs> event coming up. Girl, same. Um, <laughs> there's another event coming up. It's not even worth mentioning right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's just like I've already done the work. Like I've already proven myself. Like I'm not. Listen. I'm not this brand new fucking that. dude. Just, just come, come to them joints with me. I don't be invited to a lot of stuff. I be at. Yeah. I just be like, yo, what's up? <laughs> I'm like California I not, with mine. I was not invited to GRPC in Phoenix this year. I was not invited. <laughs> Wait, well, why were you in Phoenix through. then? Really? Oh, you just came to Phoenix? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. I like your style, Maj. I'll come with you and we can just go to some stuff we weren't invited to. <laughs> just right. to be like, Holla. Yeah, but then he's always and, invited after. And why weren't we invited? Mm-hmm. Right. What you got going on over here? Oh, this this what this room is? Right. And I'm going to do my own thing too. Because they already like, have the the black uh, the black guy who's from the urban area. Mm. Let's right. just be it's honest. Like, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a balance. When we want to go and speak at these things and do and create our own things too, and even if you don't want to go to those or call them out, like, yo, where is the Mexican representation? Because yeah. a chunk of America is Mexican. Where is the black representation? Because a chunk of where is the fucking suburban rural white irish like 
Come on, if we the melting pot, be the fucking melting pot. Mm -hmm. And if you're not gonna be the melting pot, somebody gotta start saying, yo, you motherfuckers ain't on that melting pot shit you pretending like you want. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. with it. Well, I'm with it. And I, also I no, like the companies that sponsor me already know I'm something wrong with me. So <laughs> alright. And I say this all you the know? time, like you're you you're black is different than my black, right? But people just see us and say, oh, look, there's a black person. There's a representative of all black people, essentially. And then it's like, no, no, no. Like, I can't go to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Maj can go to Philly, but will he go to, you know, um, Highland Highland Park, Dallas? I don't know. Oh, Probably I'd be a little I bit will. better. Huh? Oh, you will I go. Will. You will go. Well, you can, but you can, I you mean, can go to Philly. <laughs> you, I can go to Highland Park, and that's what I'm saying. Fuck that. Yes, you can. Come to Philly. Well, yes, you know, I I'm trying I to say... Y'all see the places that I go to, like, them fancy places, too? I know. I know we, with your food and everything. We gonna go us jealous. We know. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> we gonna go everywhere because our right, our human right to exist on this plane, no one can check us in that regard. Mm -mm. I, it ain't... We ain't in one lane. We are... You know, we a jet plane on the highway. We could be in every lane at the same time. And that's the key. And right. if you don't like that, as as the person that will, what, what, why are you in all the, nah, I, I'm not a firearm instructor. I'm not a lawyer. You know, it's like, but no, I can still speak a language and interact with people and put them together and make people culturally relevant and understand different cultures. The, this is why we all need to be in all of these spaces, even if it's like, nah, the reason why I'm not going to this space is for this reason. This is a thought process of, um, I got a pick this again, respectful irreverence. Respectfully, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why I have irreverence for your situation. You know, mm -hmm. respectfully, I'm going to go on that economist. I'm going to take that platform. I'm going to address it. And when a young person says something that's silly, I'm going to say that's the silliest thing in the world. You're talking <laughs> about an AR buyback. Respectfully. Right. I'm going to mm -hmm. shake Gifford's hand. He ain't want to shake mine. He, the Pete, the, the guy on the panel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm going to shake everyone's hand. You know, we're going to respectfully agree to disagree. I'm going to be right where I'm right. You're going to be wrong where you're wrong. And we're going to move forward. But that's going to be constant. That's going to be the consistent theme. And if Edgar, if the, yo, well, now that Edgar's bringing it up, it's like, all right, cool. Yo, Edgar, come to my shit. Edgar, I'm going to come to your shit. You know what I mean? And then when people say, well, why didn't Edgar come? Well, for the last year, you motherfuckers had bumper stickers that said build the wall higher. How you think our Mexican-American friends take that? Mm -hmm. We right. have to show a unified front to make sure that people are being culturally relevant. And that being culturally relevant does not necessarily mean we snowflaking it out. We're going to be respectful. We're going to understand that we all have commonalities, but we all got cultures that's different. And we're not going out our way to just be offensive to somebody just because it's a, 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 a not so fucking funny bumper sticker. Well, and, and it's not even that. It's just it, we're at a gun conference. Like, that's that's right. not where, where I, like, if, right. if I was showing up to a fucking build a wall debate then i'd expect those fucking signs but I, i'm showing up to a 2 a mm -hmm. event like right. same thing i don't want to see like i don't want to have a, an abortion debate on the, at a fucking 2 a conference because i'm there to talk about right. guns right. right right keep your eye on the prize you know right. the, all of that's a distraction from the mission that we're on in terms of this particular issue you know correct mm -hmm. correct yeah and yeah. It, and it's offensive it, like not it, it it actually hurts the goal to to muddy the waters with stuff like that right so um well maj thank you so much for joining us i know it's late i know yeah. that you just did a two-hour show right then like a two-hour <laughs> show with larry yeah. uh yeah. yeah i'm excited to see that though but um yeah it's, it's so good to see you i think when's the next i'm gonna see you i was trying to figure it out Sometimes I just, I didn't even know you were going to be in D.C. when you did the hearing. So who knows when I'll see you next. <laughs> right. It's like, hey, right. there's Mash. 
but uh but thank you so much for coming on our podcast though it's always fascinating to to hear your ideas and um and i love i love your approach to trying to find solutions to problems instead of just complaining about them just in general being a solutionary that is just i'm all on board with that so um it's great to talk to you y'all are welcome to come to any of my cali classes I'm gonna be oh, I'm looking at into seat. that. I'm looking into that. Yeah. Janine invited so me. I, I, y- y'all, <laughs> it's my platform. Y'all got it. Thanks y'all for having me. Well, hey, hey before you leave, yeah. uh, let people know how they can donate to your campaign. And how they can support oh, your yeah. causes just in general. Maj, majforphilly.com. M-A-J-F-O-R-P-H-I-L-L-Y.com. Majforphilly.com. Everybody, if you learned something today, Donate, donate, donate. The election is November the 5th. We need as much resources as possible. If you still want to donate to the GoFundMe for Black Guns Matter, you can. GoFundMe.com forward slash Black Guns Matter. Um, what's y'all, Edgar, what's your, um, y'all got what? What y'all got? Patreon, what y'all got? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. have we have a Patreon. It's a trigger warning to a podcast on Patreon. Bam. There you go. Support that too, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Marge. You've always supported right. us in the beginning, so we really appreciate it, and uh, we'll we'll see you soon. And so. I love wearing my no Black Guns Matter shirt around Denver and having people give me looks. So. No <laughs> All right, peace, y'all. All right, bye, Thank Maj. you, Maj. Oh man, that was good. It's always good. Yeah. Maj always tells it like it is. Always. I know. I really. <laughs> I love his honesty about. Um, not. I mean, because we were t- we were having a discussion about forgiveness, and he just comes in. He's like, "I see it this way," and period. You yeah. know. I love that. I appreciate. I just appreciate that. Um, yeah, and I was wondering. I didn't know. I guess. So there was no nobody was really. Were people upset arguing with in anything? the chat? Uh, no, no upset. Okay. No, nobody's upset. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever upset. Um, I'm gonna look back. <laughs> I will look back at this later. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, uh, interesting. He was talking about his uh, my my black ancestry is also um, is also West African like that. So I wonder if we have some some shared ancestors there because um, Sierra Leone, all those all those countries over there, those are those are my homies. <laughs> So I'm your homie then. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm 100% West African. Well, I would just, I mean, I was meaning in terms of the, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the being brought over here from those same countries or with the same last name. Because of, cor- of course you're my homie girl. I know. Please. I know. For sure. <laughs> um, I just didn't know that about his ancestry, but it's always great to hear Maj. And really, if um, for all of our listeners, please support him any way you can. He would be such a great member of the Philly oh City Council. Oh my goodness. And I can't, I'm so sick of people who, I mean, he was talking about a story of someone literally calling him just to tell him that he didn't think he was going to win and even though he was a wealthy donor mm-hmm. was telling him that he didn't think he's going to win like dude he's not going to win because you're not donating <laughs> yeah well if like you, if you with withhold funding mentality like that. is ridiculous mm-hmm. and i hate that mentality of uh like well i i support you but you're not going to win it's like no don't don't do that you know if everyone has that mentality then he won't but if if we Absolutely. have a victory mentality then that's how we can actually get the right people in office absolutely so. absolutely yeah well we're gonna head out um this was a really great conversation thank you guys so much for um hanging in there i know it's late for some of you guys um of course we are thankful to edgar and guns for everyone here our in wheat ridge Colorado. our producer yes <laughs> does so many things for us um and then also gun owners of america we're still in partnership with them um if you guys are looking to be a member you guys can get 25 percent off uh with the link um i think edgar usually knows it by heart and he puts it in the comment section so look out for that Right. And uh, yeah, and then Patreon, of course. You guys, if you guys want to be a patron, please go to Trigger Warning Pot Two A Podcast on Patreon. Yeah, we would love for you guys to be patrons. Um, but even if you guys can't support us financially, if you really enjoyed this podcast or you enjoyed any of our conversations, please just share it um, on social media yes. or anywhere that um, you like. would like. And we did get our Apple podcast approved. Oh, yeah. Woo! So uh, we should announce pretty that. Pretty big news. Sorry about that. <laughs> so um, yeah. we are on <laughs> iTunes now, too. Yes. So, so yes, yeah, look for us on iTunes and podcasts. And also we're on Google Play, but we didn't really care about that. So. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> Edgar. Edgar's upset about that comment. <laughs> For weeks now, we were like, okay, we really want that. And then iTunes like made us like wait it out like three yeah, turns. We had to try many times <laughs> for them to approve us, but they right. did approve. Right. And um, right. and I, you know, Google. If you're if you're on Google Play, you should still listen. All right, and share <laughs> exactly, and so, share and like. So anyway, thank you guys so much. My name is Antonia Okafor, and I'm Nina Prevo. I won't be here next week, but um, yeah, Antonia will be here for a show. So um, have a great week, everyone. Yes, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>